What's going on guys, Victor here. I got my buddy James with me today. And big thank you to JP Outfitters for inviting us out. JP specializes in a lot of invasive hunts. So Egyptian geese, Muscovy ducks, iguanas, all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna have all of his stuff linked below if you guys wanna do a hunt like this. So what's first on the menu, JP? Uh, we're gonna see if we can take out these Muscovy ducks because they're invasive. They want them off the course. Um, they make a mess, they spread disease. I don't recommend eating them. They're not really a clean duck, they're kind of like raccoons with wings. So we're starting out the day and we're mainly looking for the Egyptian geese, which you guys are gonna see later. I'm really confident we're gonna get them. Lights out, James. Lights, lights out. out. First Muscovy. Look on the rest of them. They're gonna come over and try to see what's up with that one. Twenty-two caliber pellet does the job. He's making his way around to go get some more. We better catch up to him. These are Muscovy duck, and they're kind of kind of like the raccoons of the sky. I mean, they're invasive. We're not going to eat them. Um, we're just basically doing some pest control out here, if you will. The the golf course that uh, we're on, they want them removed. They're they're problematic. They actually can spread disease. Uh, they don't migrate like most ducks. These things just sit here and just multiply and multiply. I've seen these things generally put out two hatches of eggs a year. Um, they make a mess everywhere. We're just kind of trying to control them. There's a lot of them out here. Uh, we're not trying to get rid of them all today, but uh, you book a hunt with me, we come out here, we do the iguanas, we do Egyptian geese, we do these things. There's several species of iguana. So it's a pretty, pretty active hunt. All air rifle, it's fun stuff. We got our first sight of Egyptian geese. We took down three Muscovies. And these things are a lot smarter than you think. They're not your normal golf course ducks. So we're kind of just walking up and slowly stalking up to them. They're kind of coming at you, right? See that one? Look at that. Oh, no. Yeah, let's see where they go. Keep an eye on them. They scoot guiding. I don't know if you want to. Go back, go back, go back. <laughs> kind of amazing. That's that's our second time trying to get the geese. Those Muscovies, you can shoot them. And it seems like all the other Muscovies get curious and come towards them, but these geese are smart as heck. I remember when I went to FAU, there'd be hundreds of them just laid out on the campus, but as soon as an animal knows it's being hunted and stalked, it's just like their instinct turns on and they're in defense mode. One shot, those geese took off. So we're waiting. Um, JP's got his deeks set right there. We want a really close shot, because you know, you're aiming for a really small head. Their heads are not very big. Needed to, but it hit them. All the bushes are moving. That's how many is in there. Put it, uh, put it right on his jawline, under his eye. Nice. 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 nice hit. That was a hit. Wow. He's on the tree. So there's this tree right here behind us, and it is just chock full of big breeder iguanas. You can see all their little heads. 
the big orange ones just sticking their heads out and that's what they do in the morning at night they'll just they'll sleep in the trees they don't want to be out in the ground at night or when it's wet out so as the sun comes up you're gonna to start to see them transition from the trees to the grass but right now they're still in the trees in the water. Yeah, the one he just shot is jacked up, but he's moving this way now. The tree that we were shooting into is the tree that we're now inside of, just looking into this big canopy, and we're trying to go and collect all the iguanas that James and I shot. And JP's, there's a really big one. But these things are smart. They like, they use the foliage and they try to get on the other side of the branch so that you, well, you can barely see them. And from time to time, you'll just hear them drop into the water. There's so many that we probably can't see. They're just so good at camouflaging. But their first instinct, iguanas are always near water. Canals, lakes, ponds, whatever it may be. Because they want to be able to fall from a tree or seawall and just go ahead and swim away from a predator, which is us in this case. So from time to time, you just hear them dropping out of the tree and into the water right here. See it? One just did it right there. Oh, yep, we got the shot. So this is one of the ones that we shot from the outside looking in. Right here, beautiful shot. Yep, look at this. And this guy, his nerves will go on for hours sometimes. I remember we brought him home to the fillet table, because this isn't the first time we've done an iguana hunt. Um, they'll just keep twitching, just like a, an alligator will or a snake. But this guy's done. Got that regrow. Does that count for two? Uh, usually the males are going to be more orange in color as they get more mature and they have this comb that runs all down their back. Females have a much smaller comb. They're usually gr greenish or grayish. So these are both males? They're both males, yep. Both big males. Nice. So we're waiting for the geese. This is usually where he says they hang out and we're kind of trying to scare them to go to the other side where we're allowed to hunt. But just to show you guys something, this, all this poop, this is Muscovy poop, iguana, um, geese poop, all three of which should not be here. You guys know I'm not about killing things unless it's for a purpose. Well, iguanas, number one, we're going to eat, and if we get a goose, we're going to eat it. Uh, the Muscovy ducks are not supposed to be here either, and they are very overpopulated, and like he said, no one's really doing anything about it. And not, aside from like the homeowner issue of just them trashing the place, iguanas do a lot of burrowing. So they'll come up on, underneath here and they'll burrow and they destroy seawalls and any type of concrete construction because they use it for warmth and they bury in it and they just undermine the foundation of everything, which is not good. It's game time, boys. What'd you say, James? I say this is a good day, boys. I mean, I don't think you guys can argue with this. This is gonna be some fun right here. This is gonna be some fun. And how about this weather? Every single time James and I, or I've tried to do an iguana hunt, it's been raining and overcast. And as you guys know from past videos, where's possible conditions? It's hot, there's barely any clouds, so the iguanas are gonna be out and about and they have no idea what's about to come to them. Dude. Yeah, what's working, buddy? Plop. No, you can't you got hung in the tree. Water. He's good. I don't know if he swam or not. He ate her. Oh. Nice! That's the dibbity dibbity. That seawall destruction I was telling you about? Yeah. 
that's all it right there. That's iguana burrows. That's them climbing in there. And this eventually will erode. He's in the water right there. Oh, that's so sick. <laughs> James is all in. He's got to get his trophy out of there. That's a good one. Ooh, that's a big dog. That is the biggest one of the day. That's commitment nice right there, job. boys. Nice job. That's a beast, boys. That's a real one. Look at them claws. That's what you gotta watch out for. That'll tear you up something rotten. They also have teeth. They do. They got, they got some nasty some teeth razor, actually. Some razor teeth. Can't really see them much. If you look in there real close, you'll see them. Yeah, no, they'll, they'll the draw blood for sure. The big thing is the jaw pressure. It has a heavy bite on them. go just got to go up and grab them these iguanas have extremely good eyesight right now since the sun's out they're tanning themselves on this golf course right here all along the water's edge but we were down there with the golf cart and as soon as we start coming up they scurry to the tree line and into the fence and uh, we were able to get one but most of them probably climbed over the fence fence or are up in the trees right now but it's amazing how far away they can see you. It is, I mean, it's incredible. We haven't given up on the geese yet. There's two just behind that tree right there. So we don't know whether or not to approach them or kind of just wait, because it looks like they're swimming right towards us. Is that two Muscovies on the right swimming towards them? Yeah. Yeah, they're on the run. They know he's there now. <gasps> winged him. He winged him. Reload, reload. Winged him again. Get low, get low. You're gonna have to cover some ground because he's walking. Reload, come on, come on, come on, get on him. Get on him. Get on him. Yeah, we're gonna lose him. So there was two. There was two Egyptian geese and now there's only one. James shot this one and it cannot fly. So we're on the hunt. Hey, this is a lot tougher than we thought. When I told James, I go, we're going on a, on a goose hunt. And I said, wear a camo, because that's what JP said. And I was like, you're kidding, right? We're going to hunt golf course geese? <laughs> These things are These smart. Things got me out of breath right now. We're gonna smoke this one though. These geese, well, the ones we're hunting, they're definitely not conditioned to humans because they are, I mean, they're afraid. We've been stalking this thing for a good, a good amount of time and I'm pretty sure this is the same two we've been seeing fly to the golf course all day long. That was it. Nice job, dude. James finally got the kill shot. There he is. Now we just gotta wait for the wind to blow him over here. Thank and God, like, when we were over here, you put whatever shot you did and, and broke his wing. Closer, you see the sail. And that was the cripple. He couldn't fly. I can wait no more. Hell yeah. Well, that's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. There it is, right there. Yep, that's where you injured him the first time in the wing. I don't think you got him in, in the breast area. No? No. Should be a nice, clean cut of meat. Beautiful bird. And they're heavy. Get in there, James. That's your that's your feel, bird right there. Feel that thing. Feel how heavy they are. Nice. Heavy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. You grab that wing. I'll get this one. Look at that. Holy smokes. That's a big wingspan. Look at yeah. that. Gorgeous. Very pretty bird. You got a little black line right there. All these different shades of... Oh, when you lift it up, you can kind of see that green, like you yeah. said. The green in there. Green, the cinnamon. It's gorgeous. 
Mm -hmm. Very pretty. And smart. Incredible <laughs> eyesight yeah. on these things. They're too smart. Incredible. Let's clean you up a little bit there. Perfect yeah, you shot. got him nice. Perfect Look shot. at that. I thought I wish I would have got him the first Perfect one. Shot. This is where James got him the second time. Perfect shot right beneath the eye right there. Beautiful Egyptian geese. Look at that ring around his eye too. Mm -hmm. So you got your choice. You can go to Africa and hunt them, or you can call, call me at JP Outfitters, 954-496-6588, or go to jpoutfittersinc.com. James got it, a good team effort. This thing had us running around the entire golf course. <laughs> and don't go out and try this at home. Um, JP is able to do this because he has a really good connection with FWC, with the local authorities, and with these gated communities. Don't go around your local South Florida town trying to shoot these things. If you guys want to do this, book a trip with JP. Very knowledgeable guy. I mean, we got Muscovies, we got Egyptian geese, and we got iguanas all in one day. And we had a blast, seriously, man. Thank actually, you. Actually, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> That's it. We haven't even been out here that long. So all of JP's stuff will be linked below. I'll have it on the screen here as well, but jpoutfitters.com, right? That's me. That's jpoutfittersinc.com. And he doesn't just do this. You do a bunch of stuff, don't you? I do everything from Everglades to offshore. So uh, I've got, you know, multiple vessels, uh, all kinds of equipment. Uh, your license is covered, all the equipment is covered, your cleaning of your game is covered. Um, just doing what I love to do, man, sharing with everybody. It's no better job in the world. Well, and you can tell, you can tell you've been doing this a long time. Yep, been out of a while. <laughs> <laughs> so all I do is I score the legs right here at the base. Score them. Chop. If you don't score them, that skin is so tough, you'll, you'll dull your hatchet out in a heartbeat. So if you score them, it goes through pretty easy. Neat little trick. back off the feet you guys have seen us in the past we'll actually score it while it's attached but i kind of like this method because all you're eating is the legs and tail so now if we wanted to remove the skin without boiling it we can just take a little skinning knife and just peel it right off the economic damage that these do as well as the environmental of course they eat bird, eat bird eggs and uh, vegetation and, and native things but the economic disaster that these are with their burrowing and tunneling on infrastructure bridges sea walls uh, the fecal matter that they leave you know your kid walks through that and they track it into the house and before you know it it's on your dinner table you know i know for a fact there's a seawall right down the street it's probably about 400 foot that they just replaced that fell in from these things burrowing behind it mm -hmm. and that goes direct to the city taxpayers hits you right in the wallet and they're cool animals, you know? I don't want to take anything away from them. They are really cool animals. But you can't just let them run run wild and keep populating because they're cool. Yeah. You, know, you gotta do something about them. And it's the same thing for the Egyptian geese. I know, especially like a neighborhood like this, you know, 55 and over, some old lady comes out, feeds them every day. She thinks they're her pets, but they're not supposed to be here. We have a lot of native wildlife and they might not look like they do damage, but when animals compete for native animals, it's never, Good. We're gonna see. I'm taking a guess here, but I think this might be a male with eggs. I've seen this a bunch of times. Let's just give it a look, see. I get in here. They're a lot smaller than I thought they would be. Yeah, and it's probably they're probably not even. They're not ready to eat, right? I don't even think they're they'll ever do anything because it's in a male. Mm -hmm. But weird stuff, right? Weird critters. So we got our Egyptian goose here. I went ahead and plucked the breast. You get as much of the down off as you can. You just don't want it on the meat. But what I like to do with my handy dandy Dexter is I'll slice right down the, the breastbone, just enough to get to the skin. Pick one side or the other if you want. Get up under there. Mm -hmm. 
very dark. It is. And the reason we're not gonna consume the wings, the drumsticks, and you're not gonna dress this bird like a, a regular duck is because this is a wild animal. You know, even though it lives on a golf course, it's not gonna have the fat content. It's not gonna be like your Thanksgiving turkey. It's just, it, wild animals are very lean. You know, they don't have a lot of fat. It's pure muscle, so there's almost nothing in that uh, wing or drumstick tissue as far as eating wise. That's uh, one thing I want to say about this. It's not a, a kill fest. You know, this is a genuine hunt. You, you can vouch for that. Oh yeah. Uh, you got to put your time in. You got to stalk them. They run, they see you. It's a, it's a true hunt. If you guys don't know who this is, this is my good buddy James. You guys have seen him cook up iguanas, uh, snakeheads, gar, all sorts of crazy stuff on the channel and absolutely kills it as you guys are seeing on the screen right now. His restaurant has been closed due to COVID for a long time, but they're finally open. Brooke and I went there and it lives up to the hype. If you guys are in the local, like South Florida area, he's got a, a restaurant called Sassafras in West Palm Beach and they're open. You guys have to check it out. This man is the real deal. Him and JT kill it in the kitchen over there. I'm gonna have it linked below as well as on the screen here. Support local business, support local chefs, and it's not your run-of-the-mill restaurant. They change their menu every week. It's all local stuff, and uh, go and say hi to James over there. Yeah, please do. It's an open kitchen, so you can come say hi. So we're gonna start out with this. We're gonna just do a brine because it's 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 a wild game. So you really want to put it. You want to want to give it a brine. So we're gonna go. It's fall. It's fall. So we're gonna do some fall spice stuff. We're gonna do a little bit of cinnamon, some clove, some allspice, some nutmeg. Any way you kind of want to do it, and you want to do a quarter a cup of, of salt to, I would say, like a quart of water. And all you do is bring it, bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil and you get all those nice fragrant spices out and, and flavors the water up, add some ice to it. And then once it cools down fully, you can submerge whatever meat that you're, like we're doing today, we're doing the, we're doing the goose. Submerge whatever meat you want in there, 24 hours. You can go more if you want. And that's about it. Brian's just gonna keep it nice and moist. It's gonna keep it flavorful, and it's gonna prevent it from having like that gamey flavor that you really don't want. All right, so it's the next day, and James is gonna do a little bolognese, the iguana into kind of like ground beef, but ground iguana as well as the duck meat. So he's working away at the tails, and we're just cutting all the meat off of the bone. This is all going to be ground up. So that's what the tails look like, and. You really only eat the tails and the legs of the iguana. We've experimented and tried to eat the ribs and stuff in the back strap, but there's just not much on it. So if you guys ever wondered what iguana looks like, that's it. Very similar to chicken or pork in color. Um, very lean, not a lot of fat, especially because these are wild iguanas. You know, they're not farm raised. I'm sure you could fatten up an iguana, but just like that. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue to Shave away. I can't make this up. Look at what just came in the mail. Literally two seconds ago. Let me show you guys what is in this box real quick. I've done a couple videos with ButcherBox in the past. It's a meat delivery service. They specialize in really good organic cuts of chicken, fish, pork, steak, all different cuts. Literally delivered to your door, completely frozen with dry ice. And uh, they're always sending us different stuff and they're always running different promos. For example, sometimes they're doing free ground beef for life. If you sign up for ButcherBox, they're gonna include free ground beef for life. They're gonna do a steak sampler. They're gonna give away a turkey. They're gonna give away salmon. So I'm not sure what this month's promo is, but I'm gonna have it on the screen here once I do the research. And you guys can also find it in the description box below. Whatever promo it is, you guys have to use the link in the description box below as well as on the screen here. So. If you guys are interested, check it out. Really good cuts of uh, just meat, poultry, fish. And this right here, this is bacon we've got from ButcherBox in the past. And since iguana is so lean, so to make the meatballs, since these are so lean and don't have fat, you gotta add some fat to it. And what better fat than animal fat? So ButcherBox bacon going in there. We're gonna run the iguana through the, the sausage maker to make the to form the little meatballs and make the sausage to actually make the meatballs. Um, like Vic said earlier, we're gonna add some add some bacon fat to it. Iguana's super lean as well as the the goose, so it just it's gonna need that fat to bind everything together, give it flavor. So we're gonna go super simple with the spices. Classic kind of go-to spices for me: coriander. And you can go pretty heavy when you're making sausage or any kind of meatball or spice, especially with this too. 
Guan is kind of flavorless for the most part. So it's gonna taste like what you cook it in. Some garlic powder. You can't leave me hanging. Nah, I gotta throw garlic in everything for Victor. Some onion powder. Some red pepper flakes. I ain't gonna go crazy with those. And then some paprika. And that's it. And then we're gonna run it right through the grinder. See how she looks. Pepper. Pour some salt. just ran the duck through the grinder with some bacon as well. This duck is, or goose, is super lean as well. So we needed to add a little bit of fat to it and it'll add flavor. Typically, when you're cooking a duck or goose, you'll take some of the thigh meat and the leg meat and you'll run it through the grinder if you're making sausage. Typically, the breast isn't really used for sausage, but we're gonna try something different today and it, I, don't, I don't see why it wouldn't work. We got it through the grinder and that was like the hardest part of the day. So we're just cutting some cucumbers up right now. This is gonna be like a little slaw and cucumber salad, like essentially a cucumber salad. All that's going into it is a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of Fresno chili, some red, some red onion, some citrus segments, and then a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some sugar and some honey. Straightforward, simple. Cucumbers. This isn't a necessity to take out the seeds. It's just pretty much aesthetic purposes. Doesn't really change or enhance the flavor. I like to call it the cucumber guts. <laughs> the cucumber guts, I like it. <laughs> Where are my guts at? Where are them guts at? Can I, wait, is this what I'm allowed to eat? Yeah, the you can guts. eat that. And if, listen, you gotta eat the guts. Just look at how nice and fancy those cuts are, you know? That's the difference between a home cook and an actual chef who does this every day. He sees a cucumber, he doesn't look at it like we do. He sees that. And then, what you do with the rest. She does a pretty decorating design. All right, so all we got, this is really simple. I took some of the, the rest of the orange, orange juice and the stuff that you couldn't use from the actual orange and just squeeze it in there just for some extra flavor. A little bit, I would say like a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, we're just gonna bang out the rest of that. Honey, apple cider vinegar, orange, and a little bit of salt and pepper will get you far with this. Oh, uh, a little bowl flip thing. Let's go. All right, there we go. I didn't want to make any more mess than I already Woo! have in this kitchen today. Uh, we let the iguana sit for a little bit, absorb some of the breadcrumbs that went in there. Just fold in an egg, kind of squeeze it in there. And you're just gonna check the consistency of this. It's gonna be a little, like, don't picture your normal ground meat because it'll definitely throw you off because this is definitely a little softer in texture. All right, you tell me one, Chef. Yeah. Go pretty heavy. That's it. Perfect. So they're just forming meatballs. I'm saying, I would say these are around like two to three ounces. So we're just gonna go down with a little, a little bit of olive oil. You obviously want to get that pan like nice and hot. Start out with the mirepoix, carrots, onion, celery, nicely finely diced by uh, Victor himself. So, Sous chef Vic, killing it. So you cook those for about five to eight minutes, depending on like the tenderness and the size. Right before those are right about there. So once the veggies are where you want them to be, like nice and soft and tender, have a little color on them, we're gonna add the, the goose meat. And we're just gonna give that a little, we're gonna cook that a little bit with, down with the veggies. So it's about 90% there. And then we're gonna add our San Marzano's and some tomato paste and just let it cook down. It's just like any other animal. It's just like any other protein. It's just a lean protein. That's all it is. Comment below if you guys are not afraid to try this. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of San Marzano's. And you can 
usually they'll come like this, like in whole form, and you just you want to just crush them with your hands or. You can go hit them after they cook down a little bit. So this is a really straightforward glaze. I haven't really gone far with it. All that's going into it, we'll just call this a brown sugar glaze essentially, is a little bit of rice wine vinegar or whatever vinegar you have in house. A little bit of rice wine vinegar, a little bit of brown sugar, some ketchup and some cornstarch and just let it, once you add the slurry to it, the little cornstarch slurry, you'll see it thicken up if you need to add more, add more. And it's really just to just put like, in, like I said, like a nice little glaze on the on the meatballs, and we'll still be able to like taste the flavor of that iguana. Look at that little nameless. This thing's doing work right now. Um, we're gonna throw the meatballs in. It's, the oven's at 375. I would say 15 to 20 minutes, but you kind of press on on the meatballs and kind of see where they're at. I say 15 to 20 minutes. We'll be right on. These are pretty much partially done. We're gonna throw a little bit of the glaze on there now. We're gonna do it some when they're finished as well, but just to get a nice. So we're just going down with the little cucumber salad right now. Make it look all nice. You got the glaze down on the plate first. There's obviously glaze on the meatballs already. That's what she wrote. You happy, Chef? Yeah. We're good. I'll do this again. Potential menu item? Absolutely. Hmm. That's something else. Me and Fisher were talking, to be That's honest. So Why does Victor keep serving us iguana? But because you're perfecting it, that's why. And um, this, these iguana meatballs are way better than I was expecting. Iguana meatballs, you get that little brown caramelization on top. Cooked perfect all the way through. Let's take a bite. You get a little bit of that glaze and that slaw sauce. I like that glaze. Mm. I mean, aside from the fact that you're eating iguana, I don't think you should compare it to iguana. These might be the best meatballs I ever had. And that's saying a lot for, you're eating a lizard, literally a lizard that we saw on a golf course yesterday. I mean, we've ate iguana now, I think. Four times, Vic? Four times. I think four times. And every time it's been absolutely delicious. And I know there are a lot of people that are like, that's so weird, that's gross, you know, like we get all those comments. And if you think about it, an iguana is a vegetarian and it's going around eating your flowers, <laughs> eating people's vegetables that they're trying to grow in their yard. They're not eating anything weird. So it's not like a Muscovy duck, like they were hunting that's going around and eating scraps out of people's trash, like a raccoon or something like, like that. <laughs> Yeah. Fisher just said it's really interesting. How do you describe it? And um, lucky, come over here and eat guana, probably the best way you can possibly eat it, which is totally amazing. And then this dish with this um, goose, what kind of goose was it? Egyptian goose. Egyptian goose. You know, it's like, where do you, where do you get a meal like this? Mm. So flavorful and tasty and some exotic food that you've never eaten or can't buy in a restaurant. It's a real treat. Thanks, James. Absolutely. Big thank you to James once again. Absolutely killed it. And I hope you guys know at home that there's no reason to lie or to fake these reactions. We honestly enjoy everything. And you know, we really are lucky to be able to go out and enjoy all the things that Florida has to offer. Big thank you to JP for taking James and I out. And uh, if you guys haven't already, check out Sassafras, West Palm Beach. I'm gonna have it linked below. And uh, yeah, if you guys are local to the area, go support local business and I'll catch all you guys in that next video.